One of the most amazing things about scripture is that it teaches us to learn from its own narrations according to Romans 15 verse 4. For whatever things were written before, were written for our learning, that we, through the patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. We therefore are going to learn the amazing things that are observable in Matthew 15 verse 21, and have ourselves comforted as hope and trust in God is consolidated. We are presented with a narrative about a woman who came to Jesus seeking help for the healing of her daughter despite being a non-Jew. Jesus would grant her wish and miraculously her daughter is healed that hour. The woman in her prayer cried to Jesus, My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But Jesus ignored her by answering her not a word. The disciples advised Jesus to send the Gentile woman away because she was pestering them to get to Jesus. She kept pushing and threw herself at the feet of Jesus and worshipped him. We learn the following in her actions and prayer. The first is desperation. The woman understood the gravity of her circumstances and how desperate it was that she was prepared to break protocol and ask for what belongs to the Jews, healing, for her daughter. She made a promise and believed it for her situation. Psalms 50 verse 15 Call upon me in the day of trouble, I will deliver you, and you shall glorify me. The second is humbleness. She did not go away despite being ignored by Jesus the first time she spoke. When she had the opportunity, she threw herself at the feet of Jesus and worshipped him by saying, Lord, help me. Imagine if it was you or me. We would simply have given up. How many times have we given up and thought we have prayed enough and there seems to be no response? James 4 verse 6 alludes to this. But he gives more grace. Therefore he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. The third is worshipful. She was a Gentile who came to Christ and appropriately addressed him as Lord, thou son of David. In this we see her reverence of God. Often you and I have that ingredient missing in our lives and prayer. The scriptures point us to such demeanor in John 4 verse 24. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The fourth point that we learn from her actions is that she is full of confidence. It was a short prayer by any standards, sincere and genuine, and had tremendous confidence in Jesus. 1 John 5 verse 14 Now this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. The fifth point is rational. The narrative exposes the notion that she received her breakthrough as an outsider, Gentile, by understanding the dynamics of the kingdom. She took on Christ at his turf and left Christ mesmerized, exclaiming that, O woman, great is thy faith. We learn perseverance. She is very persistent in her pursuit. Despite being swayed away from her request by Jesus after being told that it is not meat, to take the children's bread and cast it. She pushed until Christ gave in to her prayer request and healed her daughter. 
Persistence pays. Is persistence ingrained in some of your prayers? Some prayers need persistence to break down walls of resistance in order to have results. For this woman, a lot of obstacles were in her way. The first, being a Gentile, the disciples surrounding Jesus requesting her expulsion. Jesus telling her that the healing she is seeking belongs to those in the kingdom of God, Jews, and not her. She persisted and received her daughter's healing. My situations or challenges sometimes need something like persistence. Number seven is fervent. James 5 verse 16b. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Fervent means passionate intensity, and such was the display of this Gentile woman. Her prayer had such intensity that it permeated through all barriers before her until the devil of infirmity was lifted off her daughter. Number eight, we learn that she is respectful. In her presentation before Jesus, she did not contest the issue that she was not of the household of Israel, but a Gentile. She did not question the legality of why Jesus said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. She could have been offended and disrespectful on the narrative that the healing children's bread she required for her daughter was not for her, but crumbs. In response, she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs. Such was her respect that she found it a diversion to be use, but to remain focused and get healing for her daughter. We learn determination. Her determination, some may argue, were driven by maternal instincts. But I would want to present to you that it was based on her understanding of the scriptural material that she knew. She understood the lineage of genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Scriptural knowledge is the most important in our faith. Scripture reveals family rights legal rights, human rights, and promises of God. Scripture also reveals redemptive rights and divine rights of all the children in the kingdom of God. The determination in this woman is indicative that she knew that her help, solution, and demise, if any, was in Jesus. We learn her faith in Jesus Christ. As compared to what Jesus had seen and experienced, her level of faith was in a class of its own, that Jesus commended her faith as great. When you and I go to Jesus, we must believe totally. Also, not that one's level of faith determines the result sometimes. Listen to what Jesus said to her. Be it unto the even as thou wilt. Any deductive reasoning shows us how the Lord Jesus implies that her breakthrough was relative to the magnitude of faith. We also note the woman's daughter was healed the moment Jesus acknowledged the faith and prayer of this woman. Brothers and sisters, let us learn from the woman the unrelenting approach of this woman in her time of need. Hebrews 4 verse 16 Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Encourages us to be as bold as this woman. She knew that no one else could help her but Jesus. This kind of tenacity comes and develops when the realization that there is no other option but God. The Bible highlights the importance of such tenacity and boldness, as in Ephesians 3 verse 12. 
in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Be assured today that Jesus is ready to answer your prayers regardless of whether you are a Jew or Gentile. His invitation is to all of us, mankind, come unto me, O ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Matthew 11 verse 28 This woman's burden was taken away. The burden of demonic vexation was removed from her daughter. I am not aware of your burden, but I am aware that Jesus is waiting for you to get in touch, according to Matthew 11, verse 28. The Secret to Hearing the Holy Spirit Hebrews chapter 3, verse 7 Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, Today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion, in the day of trial in the wilderness. Revelation chapter 3, verse 22 He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. When Jesus was nearing the completion of his earthly ministry, he promised to send a comforter to his disciples and one who will make the work of the gospel seamless. He called him a teacher and the spirit of truth. However, it is sad these days to see believers erroneously refer to the Holy Spirit using the it determinant. Whether this is conscious or an oversight, it is wrong. The Holy Spirit is a person and not an object as we do presume. When Jesus mentioned comforter, I am sure he didn't have an inanimate object in mind. The Trinity is God in three persons, Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God himself, and not an it, but indeed a he. There are biblical verses and scriptural backings that prove the personhood of the Holy Spirit and put away the idea of him possibly being an impersonal object. The Holy Spirit possesses emotions. Ephesians 4 verse 30 And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, wherefore ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. This simply means that the Holy Spirit has feelings. He can be aggrieved if we refuse to lend our ears to his promptings and refuse to hearken to his teachings. The Holy Spirit is omniscient. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 11 For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. He is the Spirit of truth, and the one who searches the heart of man. There is no wisdom or knowledge that is above him, he is the wisdom of God that has been even before time began. The Holy Spirit has will. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 11 But all these worketh that one and the selfsame Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. This verse enunciates the power of the Holy Spirit to distribute diverse spiritual gifts to believers. However, the distribution of these gifts isn't according to works or status, so that man will not boast in himself but to the glory of God, 
and to the edification of the body of Christ. Attributes of the Holy Spirit He strives. Sometimes we feel a burden in our hearts about giving in our hearts to God and yielding to Him completely. Other times we have a conviction in our hearts or feel an irresistible nudge to surrender to God. Oftentimes it isn't forceful. It leaves us with the choice of responding to that call or ignoring it altogether. God will not force anyone to do that which he hasn't opened up his heart to do or wrestle with him to do his will. He is persistently persuading, setting the truth before man and reasoning with him to choose life. In the book of Genesis 6 verse 3 he affirmed this. Genesis 6 verse 3 And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. He is striving with our spirit to come to him and accept him as Lord and Saviour. He teaches. The Holy Spirit teaches and gives man utterance. In our daily lives, interactions, spreading the gospel of Christ and even in the place of prayer, he quickens us. He shall teach us the exact things to say when the time comes. Luke 12 verse 12 For the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what ye ought to say. He convicts. The Holy Spirit reproves sinners of their sins and disbelief in the word of truth. John 16 verse 8 And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. He helps and intercedes. In ourselves as humans, we don't know what to pray for. The natural man doesn't help us ask us for that which is the will of the Father for our lives. Rather, it tables its own pressing needs before God. On the contrary, the Spirit helps our fleshy infirmities and quickens us in the place of prayer. He is our advocate before God. Romans 8 verse 26 Likewise the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings, that which cannot be uttered. He indwells in believers. The Holy Spirit indwells in believers at the point of conversion. He teaches us the will of the Father and help us do it. John 7 verse 39 He sanctifies. The Holy Spirit sanctifies us and makes us holy and acceptable before the Father. Through election, we have been sanctified and ordained unto good works.